Hello everyone! Today we'll be going through the process of altering a cheap straw hat into one that can be worn with 18th century costumes. This involves removing and reshaping the crown, cutting away some straw from the sides, lining the interior, and trimming the hat with flowers and a bow. I'm pairing this hat with a dress based on examples from the late 1700s, and during this period larger hats were in style but the techniques I'll be showing could be used to shape straw hats in a variety of different ways which would make them suitable for a bunch of different periods. For this project you'll need a hot glue gun, scissors that can cut through straw and a seam ripper if you have one, a marker of some sort, a square of thick interfacing or buckram or cardboard, it just has to be able to keep its shape, and if you're decorating or lining the hat, you'll want scissors for cutting through fabric. You'll also need a needle and thread, a bit of fabric, and fake flowers or anything else you want to decorate with. And you'll also need a straw hat, specifically a hat made from braided straw instead of woven. I got mine from Michael's Crafts for three bucks. Step one is trying the hat on and figuring out how tall you want the sides to be. Then use a pin or marker to mark that point. Use the seam ripper or tiny scissors to remove the stitching from the straw that is above the marking you made. You don't want to cut into the straw, just remove the stitching. You know you've done enough ripping out when the top of the hat separates away like this. Now you can remove this portion entirely by cutting into the straw. And you want to cut right here where my finger is pointing. Set that aside for now and get the seam ripper back out. Since the straw is sewn together in a spiral pattern, one side of the hat will be taller than the other, which you really don't want since straw hats from the 18th century had flat tops. So once again use the scissors and seam ripper to remove the stitching from the straw, and do this on whichever side or portions of the hat are tallest until it's all an even height. I trimmed away a bit of excess straw but left 3 or 4 inches of it attached to the hat. Then I used hot glue to glue the straw in place, and instead of gluing it in its original position, I'm gluing it directly on top of the other piece of straw, which should give the hat an even height. And I used binder clips to keep the straw in place while the glue sets. Now it's time to get to work on the top of the hat. The main goal here is to get rid of the domed shape, since 18th century straw hats usually had flat tops. So remove the stitching starting from the outer edges and working inward. Here's where I decide to stop. As you can see, the very center of the hat is pretty flat and will work fine for the new crown we'll be creating. And speaking of the new crown, now that the glue has dried, we can get to drafting that. I removed the binder clips on my hat, then flipped it over and set the portion that is open on top of the heavyweight interfacing. I used a marker and traced around the opening of the hat, transferring the shape onto the interfacing. Now if you want the crown to be perfectly circular, you can cut along this line, but I want mine to be more of an oval, so I cut a quarter inch away from these lines, then trimmed almost half an inch off of either side of the circle to create an oval, and I kept trimming until the interfacing piece fit nicely inside the hat. And once it fit, I used hot glue to secure it in place. While the glue is still melted, I press the interfacing down so it sits slightly below the sides of the hat. This is done so once the straw is glued on top, it will be level with the sides of the hat instead of being above them. Now it's time to glue the top of the hat back on. I started from the outer edges at the back of the hat, but I realized pretty quickly that the straw wasn't staying where I wanted it to. It was shifting away from the sides of the hat and it looked pretty bad. So I used my needle and thread and whip stitched the straw to the sides of the hat, and I used heavy duty upholstery thread for this since the straw is really abrasive and difficult to stitch through. I also left my stitches pretty loose because the straw would break when I pulled the stitching tight. Because of this, the stitching isn't too pretty, but it blends into the color of the straw quite nicely and still isn't very noticeable. And I only sewed the straw that goes around the perimeter of the top of the hat to the sides, the rest glued in place just fine. Now the rest of the straw can be glued to the interfacing in a spiral pattern until you reach the center. After finishing that step, I tried the hat on and realized one side of the brim was bigger than the other by a half inch. So I used my seam ripper to remove the straw at the edge of the brim. 
and I continued this until the portion causing it to be uneven was separated from the brim. Then I cut the straw and tucked the remaining few inches underneath the brim, where they were secured with the help of hot glue. I was doing this to make mine symmetrical, but if you wanted, you could use this same process to make the entire brim smaller and to change the hat's proportion. Now it's time to work with the flowers and fabric and all of those wonderful things. The first thing I'll be doing is lining the hat, and to do this, measure the depth and circumference of the brim. Cut a strip of fabric that is several inches longer than the brim circumference, then iron one edge inward. Now mark and cut the strip so it's one inch wider than the brim of the hat. Then gather the strip of fabric one inch away from the unfolded edge. The end result should look like this. You could sew it in right away, but I used pins to secure the folded edge of the fabric to the edge of the brim. Then I used whip stitches to secure the fabric to the straw. Once again, I'm using heavy duty thread for this and I'm leaving the stitching quite loose to avoid breaking the straw. Once I went all the way around, I tied the thread off and clipped it. Now I'm pulling firmly on the other edge of the fabric and gluing it to the interior of the sides of the hat. You'll want the material to be quite taut, otherwise it can hang down and look baggy or messy when worn. But make sure you aren't pulling too much, otherwise you can bend the straw, which won't look very good. And I'm using a very generous amount of glue for this step since you really want the fabric to be secured to the straw. And now for the fun part, pretty little details. I started by gluing a folded strip of fabric around the sides of the hat. Then I glued a homemade bow onto the back of the hat, which also covers where the fabric ribbon meets. I placed a bunch of fake flowers onto the right side of the hat. Obviously placement is totally up to you, I just like asymmetrical hats which is why I did mine this way. Like in all my headpiece tutorials, the fake flowers are secured with hot glue and held in place for 10 to 30 seconds until the glue has partially set. And I also glued down some leaves from the fake flowers to make them look a bit more realistic. I should also mention that during this process I was constantly trying the hat on, since the placement can look different when the hat's worn as opposed to when it's on a table. Once I got all the flowers on, I was pretty happy with it, but it was missing a little something so I decided to add an ostrich feather. And that's it! This is my finished hat. I'm really pleased with it, especially since it took less than $10 of materials and only an hour to make. It should be the perfect accessory to pair with my 1790s dress. And as I said earlier, these steps could be followed to create a huge variety of different hat styles. I just chose to shape mine this way since it best suits the period. I think that covers everything. I'll have more information about my materials in the description box, and if you have any questions about the project, I can try to answer you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed.